Wow. Well, I am so thrilled to be back. And I'm back with this guy or this guy over here. You know, people ask me, they go, Rex, you know, you're a speaker. How come you're not like a speaker? And I go, you know what? I'd only get to spend an hour or two with people, but I get to spend incredible amounts of time with all sorts of stellar guests like the gentleman who's next to me. He's known as I'm going to I'm going to mess this up, but but he's like a relationship guru, like doctor relationship. He's an author. He's written a book. He's done all these things. But if he doesn't call himself that his people call himself that that's that's the true sign of a leader. He's out there leading the pack by helping people connect better. So this is Mr. Barry Selby. How you doing, Barry? I'm doing great. Thank you, Rex, for the introduction. Yes, I'm known as the love doctor to my clients and friends. That's how I got branded. Although the name's already taken, so I can't use it in my labeling. I just say what well, they, they call me, you know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so happy that you're here and you are the love doctor and you have a book. Why don't we just tell everybody what the name of the book is right away. And it's. Um... It is 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. Um, I got the title because Paul Simon wrote a song that was the antithesis of my book before I wrote it. And my book is about 50 principles for healthy relationships with yourself and others. That's the main board. It's on Amazon. You can, you know, find it that way. You can go to my websites there too. And it's a beautiful book and I learned a lot. Thank it's you. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Um, so Barry, you know, because this is a, a, a leadership summit and we're talking about leading uh, yourself, you. others and connecting with people because, you know, it's not just a leader with followers, but it's that interaction. Right. And, and the thing so, is also, I was going to say is being invited to this, week-long conversation about leadership i is going well how, how do i fit in this i'm a relationship expert it's not my field i'm a business leader that sort of thing in this sense but what already got clearly is it is sort of downloaded to me is that we are leading our own lives obviously you know you lead a good life you lead a healthy life that's kind of mindset but also we lead our own um way of being in the world and i've you know i've been doing this work for the last well 13 years and i've been in the personal development field for 40 years and the core thing i got over everything yeah, the relationship that counts most is the one in the mirror. And so when we lead from that place, when we lead in our relationship with other people, with our families, with our children, with our co-workers everywhere, that makes everything better as well. So it's how do you lead is the key question. So how do you lead? <laughs> I think you might go there. Um, the simplest way I put it is a lot of times we have this habit of, I say this nicely, judging other people we evaluate ourselves in comparison we think about other people in good or bad ways and then ourselves in retrospect to that and the, again the truth is relationship with self comes first so when we're not honoring and respecting and trusting ourselves first of all why not secondly what we do about that is we become a much healthier um leader in that sense meaning that we are honest with ourselves we're taking care of ourselves we're forgiving ourselves that's the biggest one for most people is letting ourselves off the hook for all the stuff we carry that is like a, a steamer trunk over a shoulder, you know, going through your life after a break, break, breakups in relationships or breakup at work or family dynamics. We carry that cross, so to speak. We don't have to. So it's being kind to ourselves, being respectful to ourselves and honoring the amazing person that we are because we are. Wow. Can they apply the 50 ways to love their lover to themselves? Absolutely. To be honest, a lot of the principles are about you, not about them. <laughs> so they want to get the book. So oh, yeah. to, for greater self-love, because that's important, and, and for being able to love and connect with others. So let me ask you this. You know, there's this saying that goes around the self-improvement community. You know, put your air mask on before you help somebody else, because, you know, in an emergency, obviously, they want you to be conscious in order to help somebody else. Absolutely. But in real life, I mean, you do have to take care of yourself. Yeah. But it's, not, it's really not an either or, is it? Well, the thing I, is, to, given the analogy, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it is. It is in a sense because in a relationship, if we keep waiting for the other person to do something for us, we can either be waiting a long time or we get upset with them because they didn't think about it because we didn't realize they can't read our minds. So, first of all, if we want something from somebody else, it's okay to be willing to ask for it, not demand it, but ask for it. The second piece is that sometimes what we want from somebody else, we can give ourselves anyway. You know, having some spare time, having some, um, having a certain thing we want to do in the world, we can say, you know, I want to go do this. You want to come with me versus you need to take me there. You know, that sort of shifting of ownership. So we get to do what we want. Well, I love that because, again, 
in a crisis situation, you put the mask on somebody else because they may not be able to do it. But in this situation, we're talking about asking the other person what they would prefer and helping right. them know what they want, not just shoving, you know, what you want down there. Or wow. Yeah. Well, that's, that, I mean, that's real. That is a powerful piece for a lot of people who may or may not know that. And um, I, I, I have a little bit of a surprise here. You do? Hey. <laughs> Nice surprise. Yay. Yay. Oh my gosh. This is so awesome. Thanks, Rex. Thanks for having me. So, nice so you. obviously, you, you know each other. <laughs> yeah. So, Parisa, you know Barry, and, and, and I'm fortunate to be in, in space with both of you. So, is there something you'd like to ask Barry, or because you know him, you would ask him to share that I might never ever think to ask? Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Rex. My question would be for you, Barry, is I experience this, this level of grace from you that is unreal. And I, I, I say this from this perspective of, I'll say these random things to you at random times, you know, <laughs> unprovoked, unsuspected, you know, you have no idea when, when I'm going to say what, and you'll just look at me, you're like, mm -hmm. yes. Like you just receive what I have to say, but it's like, you already knew what I was going to say. I want to know how you got to that place within yourself, that you're able well, to meet people there. Well, meeting you yet in that way. Yes. To know what you're going to say ahead of time. I'm not, I'm not trying, um, what's the one looking for? <laughs> I can't tell the future. No. However, I, I've been on this journey for quite a long time. And part of the work for me has always been about having enough self regard self love and self care that when somebody says something to me i don't react to it anymore the big shift for me was moving from reaction to response which frankly is a game changer and being able to respond to other people like you in conversation first of all it means don't say the first thing that comes through because sometimes that cannot be very healthy <laughs> and secondly it's also what would add to the conversation what would add value is kind of what drives my work anyway and what i do with my friends and, and clients I have recently, and this has come up recently for myself, notice where I'm getting off track and I tend not to be adding value. And so I'm almost gonna like rewind it and pull it back from conversations I'm in saying, you know what, let me back away for a second. So I'm not perfect at this by any means. So it's really about honoring and, and adding that way. Well, that sounds like a, a, something that other people might wanna embrace at times when things aren't going the way they want, they might wanna take a pause or back up and come back to it, you know, as long as parties agree. Mm -hmm. But what say you? It's something that, I mean, again, I've I've learned massively to be able to move into response versus reactivity. Anybody who's going through that journey where something happens and it triggers them or upsets them or, or just stirs their pot without them wanting it to is really where they can look and go, okay, how can I fix this? How can I work with this? How can I transition this? I mean, part of my work with my clients has been shifting them from that reactive place where they're always at the mercy of other people to a place where they have mastery of themselves. And that's where the responsiveness comes from. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Um, is there anything you want to say that we might never think to ask you? Because a lot of times, I mean, you're you're the love doctor, and a lot of times you get asked the same questions over and over again because it's the top of people's consciousness mm -hmm. when they ask somebody. But what is it something that you want to talk about that you never may never get to talk about? Wow. Well, since I have over 200 episodes of my two podcasts I co-host. I've covered quite a lot of stuff. And I'm thinking what I have not covered. <laughs> I think in reality, as I said at the beginning, is relationship with self comes first. And the biggest trap we fall into, which I did many times, was look for a relationship outside myself and be codependent with somebody. And that was always, ultimately, fails what was what I wanted. It never was fulfilling. It wasn't whole. It wasn't everything I wanted. So I've spent quite a few years alone, happily so, because I've really navigated that path. Which is one reason I'm happy in the way I am because I realized the relationship with myself had to come first. And it's not a selfish act, but it's a self with a big S, selfish <laughs> act. The sense that it's about taking care of ourself, it's being better for other people. And if we all were willing to care for ourselves with forgiveness and get ourselves off our high horses and be more vulnerable, more honest, more real around other people, we would change the planet, frankly. But it's a big movement, you know? So, I, I, I want to have Parisa talk, but I, you said something that I embrace. I love it. And and I know that many people do. And then many, many people just totally fear it. And that is the ability to have a good relationship with yourself and not be in a relationship with a 
partner. Mm -hmm. so, that so, is okay, right? People could right. do that, correct? Exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, there are, admittedly, there are some people who function best in partnership. That's that's navigate. That's part of people's experience. But if you can find the time to be on your own, because a lot of times I watch people go from relationship to relationship with nothing in between. Like they almost want to fill the gap they think they've got because they haven't taken care of themselves first. But if you can find the time, excuse me, if you can choose the time after you break up to not enter another relationship, to spend time with your own relationship yourself, then it gets so much easier to be in a new relationship after that because you're no longer giving everything away and being drained again like you've maybe done in the previous one. Good. Brisa? <laughs> Um, without sharing any of my history and on this uh, large broadcast, <laughs> I completely uh, agree with Barry. It's um, I've I've really I, after I got divorced, I let that be the prominent focus of my journey is really enjoying being on my own and not lonely, not alone, just on my own and really yeah. discovering things that I hadn't yet discovered. And really uh, creating a new meaning for things, and um, feel like become a master at that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I, you know, I want to ask then: is it <clears throat> is it possible for somebody to live with another person and 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 not do violent damage to each other? <laughs> is it well, well, I mean, you know, maybe I shouldn't use the word violent because that's not what I meant. But the idea that you know people get together and then they find out they don't like each other, but people can get together and find out that they like and love and appreciate each other even more. So what is the process? I suppose picking the right person first would be, <laughs> well, I mean, you tell well, me. Actually, being first is being the right person. I'll say that. Then picking the right person. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you pick somebody who you can grow mm -hmm. with. The challenge is that most of us are driven by external reference points, whether it's like chemistry or looks or those sort of things, which are transitory. So if you want to find someone to be in a long-term relationship with, you know they're going to change, first of all. <laughs> and secondly, you're going to change. So you've got to be willing to meet somebody and say, you know, this is who I am now, but let, you want to walk this path together in a way that grows both of us. Because really, if you want to be in a healthy relationship, at least in my languaging, you're going to be growing together. If you're not growing, you know, you're basically, as somebody, one of my teachers says, if you're not growing, you're dying, basically. So, yeah, definitely find someone who you can navigate with and find someone you walk side by side. Or oh, one thing I do visually is a lot of times people are focused on relationship where they're going to meet a soulmate and be like stuck together like this. The reality is relationships should be side by side, walking together, not walking at each other because you can't see where you're going. So that's a I, I would venture to say that there are a handful of people mm -hmm. that say, wow, I'd like to find a partner that I can grow together with as opposed to, I want the person who completes me. I don't want to be lonely anymore. I need someone to fill that gap or, Ooh, I like him because he's got a hot set of buns or I like her because of something. But to actually want to grow together with another person throughout the duration of a relationship is an, an amazing concept. Uh, what cracks me up is people don't recognize that, you know I mean? Cause it's, it makes sense to me. Of course I've been on my own journey. But if we all got that, again, the, the choices we make, if more people made that same choice to choose to grow in their own lives and with a partner, it would just change our, our culture, change our population. Wow. I like to say, I feel like I feel like people say that they want that and they want to do that. But I feel like <laughs> I don't actually know how to do it. If I'm just going to like call mm -hmm. out the elephant in the room right now, like people don't know how to do that. And right. it's okay, there's no shame, there's no blame. But I think there's not enough humility uh, with with people stepping into the learning process of that. That's the thing, is you, when you're growing, it's like that's when your ego oftentimes gets tested or gets demolished. <laughs> so <laughs> to be in a relationship does not mean you're going to be perfect all the time. Some people, they think they want to have it together, and they, you know, it's like they don't want their partners to experience them farting or something, you know, that crazy idea. But it's, the truth is, relationship is about all of this stuff, all of the journey. You know, the, the, in, in the traditional values, it's like, you know, to death do us part, richer and poorer. Well, most people can't get what that means. And I don't mean it literally. The idea of that you're going to go through ups and downs and you go through transitions and changes, you know, going through a relationship when, when maybe a, a parent passes away, how do, you, how do you relate to your partner then? Do you shut down? Do you become more accommodating to your partner? How do you do that? So these are growth opportunities that every relationship offers us. Hmm. 
beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's counterintuitive it would seem but it's actually intuitive but but for most people because of how we're brought up in our societies and what we seek to to try and fulfill uh it, it would seem like whoa you know that's impossible but but it's not and and you're proof of that you're demonstrating and you 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 know you counsel coach and help people connect in that way but i think Parisa's point is is well taken most people do not know how to do that now um you said something about ego and and the ability to be hum, you know to be humble um do you think that people need to be willing to be wrong you know <laughs> except for their mistakes and say oh my god i can't believe i did that you know i'm a, you know please forgive me as opposed to the you know well the blame game that a lot of people play absolutely i i, I talk about self-forgiveness as part of my work because it's the cornerstone of being free. Um, there's, I love um, Richard Buck's book, Running from Safety, where he talks about how the, when you discover that you, when you're in a prison cell, that you have the key to the door that you lock yourself in because you're not willing to let go, not willing to get off your own high horse, you're not willing to forgive yourself to be free. And so forgiveness, I talk about self forgiveness because reality is somebody else can't forgive you because they can say, I forgive you, but you're still carrying the judgments inside. So you've got to be willing to forgive yourself, same as they need to be willing to forgive themselves as well. Because that's where the real thriving is. You know, it's like it's not about forgive them, they don't know what they do, quoting somebody from the Bible. <laughs> it's really about forgiving yourself because that's the only place you can forgive. Because because forgiveness is about the judgment, not the action. The action is done, it's happened. Yeah. But by being vulnerable, by being humble and being yes, we want to say, you know what, I screwed up, I'm so sorry. Is a starting point, not the ending point. But it's a starting point. You don't get a get out of jail free card by saying I'm sorry. There's still going to be reparation. There's still going to be work to do in a relationship, of course. We're now we're just about out of time, but Prissy, you want to? I think I, I could mean, be wrong. I, I can't tell with the with the schedule right now, but I could go like three hours with Barry alone and and ask some really tough questions, and this would be real juicy. But this is not my segment, and I'm just going to be a guest here. But I think well, Jim. Well, Keep going until they, until they take us down. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, I, oh, well we Jim, I, I, Barry, I want to appreciate you. Thank you so much. Like the insights, you know, I, I want to just point out some of the comments from the chat. You know, um, the world needs to hear this discussion. Wow. Um, and even from the private chat in the back, you know, this is very, you know, um, Jim Miller, one of our own teammates and co-hosts says, wow, this is powerful information. So I just wanted to like really um, give you the, the feedback that, you know, what you're sharing has, has really been very, very impactful. And we thank you for coming on the Los Angeles Tribune um, and giving your value. You know, um, when, when people want to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to connect with you, Barry? Um, well, my website's in my handle, but also that QR code in the corner has all my information, links to my podcast, to my um, social media, everything else. So that's the best way of reaching me. Just, you know, scan it. <laughs> so awesome. And with this, Rex, I'm going to give you the the floor to transition to your next speaker. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Well, I'd like to point out, Barry, before you leave and before Parisa or, and Ava leave, is it's the notion that we've talked about leadership without really using that word. We've talked about the the integrity and the principles of being uh, able to interact more lovingly and kind and with integrity with another person. And I really appreciate and respect that about you. So thank you for being here. We'll have you back because uh, I can see that people want more time with you like, like Teresa <laughs> did. And with that, we're going to bring up uh, my next guest who you also know. Yes, I do. Is, is Mr. Scott Jones. So, okay, with that, um, I'm going to bring him up to the stage. And uh, did you guys say 